In this video, we are going to take a look at Unit 8, Lesson 2, Practice Problems. So number one, it says the measure of angle AOB. So AOB, which is a central angle, the vertex is on the center of the circle, is 56 degrees. What is the measure of angle ACB? So this angle, which is an inscribed angle, since it is on the edge of the circle, the vertex is on the edge. So this one is an inscribed angle. And the green one is a central angle. So we know that the central angle is actually equal to this intercepted arc. So we know that this arc measure is 56 degrees. And then an inscribed angle is actually half of the intercepted arc. And this, inter this inscribed angle also intercepts this arc. So it is half of 56. So angle ACB equals 56 divided by 2, which is 28 degrees. Explain the difference between a central angle and an inscribed angle. So we kind of just talked about that on the last screen. But a central angle is formed um, with two radii. Okay, meaning that the vertex is at the center. Okay, this angle is also equal to the measure of the intercepted arc. So then a, um, an inscribed angle is formed by two chords. Um, and the two chords have to meet at one point, so they have to share an endpoint. So formed by two chords with a common endpoint. And this is equal to um, half the measure of the intercepted arc. Um, and I guess I didn't write in there about the vertex, but the vertex, so this means the vertex is on the edge of the circle. Okay, so if I just draw a quick sketch here. So remember that you've got the center. The central angle is has its vertex on the center. And then the inscribed angle is going to have its center on the edge of the circle. So formed by two chords, which go from edge to edge. Um, central angle formed by two radii that go from center to edge. Number three, what is the measure of the arc from A to B that does not pass through C? Okay, so we want to go from A to B, but not go through C. So we want this measure here. Okay, so how big is that? So a couple of things that we see in this diagram are that the 40 degree angle is labeled. So that's an inscribed angle because it's on the edge of the circle. Okay, so we see this angle and we also see that that angle intercepts this arc. It starts and stops at B and C. And then we also see a um, diameter, hopefully. So we see this diameter here goes through the center, goes from A to C, edge to edge through the center. So if we use kind of all of that information that we know, okay, an inscribed angle is half of the intercepted arc. So if I take this angle and I multiply it by two, I will get this arc, okay? So this arc is 80 degrees. Then because we have a diameter, we know it cuts the circle in half. So we know that this whole measure of this big arc is 180. So if I do 180 minus the 80 degree arc that we already know, that will give me the measure of this blue arc to be 100 degrees. 
Okay, and the blue arc, if you remember, is what we were looking for. So that is 100 degrees. Number four, find the measures of X, Y, and Z. So very similar to what we just did. So we see a diameter. So we know that it's cutting the circle in half. Okay, so we know that this whole arc here is 180. So we know that Z is going to be 180 minus 50. So Z is going to be 130 degrees. Okay, and I'll kind of get rid of this. So we can see just this arc right here is going to be 130. Then we also know that the central angle is equal to the intercepted arc. So this angle here is going to be equal to the arc that it creates. So X is going to be 50 degrees. And similarly, Y is going to be 130 degrees equal to that red arc. Number five, match the vocabulary term with its label. So let's look at, I would just look at these letters first and then move them to the um, term here. So we want M, okay, M is this angle here. So we see that the angle is formed by this radius and this radius. So M is going to be your central angle, okay? So central angle is number one. And within that, we also had to define what W was, okay? So W is a radius going from center to edge. So W is the radius. Diameter goes from edge to edge through the center, okay? So that's going to be X. So diameter is number three. And then that leaves um, Y, that just goes from edge to edge to be your chord that is not a diameter, okay? So number four, Y is a chord that is not a diameter. Number six, the um, triangle has these vertices. What is the point of intersection of the medians? So let me grab a graph here so we can plot these. There are other ways that you can do this. Also, I just like to plot the triangle. Um, so you need to get all the way to 12. So let me change this a little bit here. I just want to move this over. All right. Um, so I'm going to graph the point negative 4, 0. All right, so we got negative 4, 0. We have negative 2. Oh, I need to get all the way up to 12. Oh, so I missed that. All right, let me bring this y-axis down to... All right, so negative 4, 0, negative 2, 12. And then 12, 0. And then we can connect these to get our triangle. Now, the median, if you remember, is the segment that connects a vertex to the opposite midpoint. And so I'm just going to find the midpoint of this bottom segment here. Um, so the midpoint is just the middle of these points. Okay, so just find the middle of negative 4 and 12, which means to add them together and divide by 2, and then find the middle of the y's. So 0 plus 0 divided by 2. So negative 4 plus 12 is 8 divided by 2 is 4. 0 plus 0 is 0 divided by 2 is 0 again. Um, so the midpoint here of this bottom segment is going to be at 4, 0. And then um, the median will connect the opposite vertex to that midpoint. And then um, we could figure out how to cut this segment in a 2 to 3 ratio, or a 2 to 1 ratio, so cut it into three equal parts. We know that the intersection point of the medians will be 2 thirds away. So we could look at this and see um, on these little slope triangles if we can create um, three equal 
partitions. So let's check. Um, so I can see where I go down three over two, down, um, let's see, did I go down three, one, two, three, four, down four over two, down one, two, three, four over two, and then down four over two, created three equal triangles. Okay, so all of those triangles are equal. So two thirds of the way will be two of those triangles. So then this um, point will be where the medians are going to intersect because the centroid, which is where the medians intersect, is a two to one ratio away from the vertex. Um, so that point, we could just count now. So that's the point two, four. Um, let's see, one, two, one, two, three, four. Okay, so two, four. So that's one way you can do it. You could also find um, the median of one of the other sides. So if I went negative two, 12 here, I could find the middle of negative two and 12, which is negative two plus 12 divided by two. So negative two plus 12 is 10 divided by two is five. And then do the same thing with the y's. So that's a 12 and a zero. So 12 plus zero is 12 divided by two is six. So this midpoint is one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six. So here's the midpoint of that side. And then I, again, could connect it with the opposite vertex. And then I would see that those cross there. So let me get rid of some of this other stuff. So if you had been doing it that way, you would have just checked where those medians, where those two medians crossed and you could have counted that point. Okay, so still the point two, four. So a couple different ways to do it there. The rule X comma Y maps to Y comma opposite X takes a line to a perpendicular line. Select another rule that takes to a perpendicular line. Okay, so we wanna be looking for another rule that's a rotation of 90. So we know that just multiplying, um, we know that kind of changing the X and Y does that. Okay, so we see how these are all kind of flipped. This one is missing an X, so let's get rid of that one. This one has both the X and Y switched and opposite. So this is actually a 180 degree rotation. So this one is gonna take the line back onto itself or to a parallel line, so that's not gonna work out. Um, B doesn't have one of them being opposite, okay? So this one, if the X was negative here, that would be fine, okay? But this one is just a dilation, so that's gonna take lines parallel to themselves. So C is sort of a dilation, but also flips one of the um, coordinates. Okay, to the opposite. So this negative is going to get you a 90 degree rotation along with making the shape larger. So you're going to get a rotation and a dilation, which will create perpendicular lines.